this is really the end of our story. A completed pair of shoes being fitted to the feet of a Timpson customer. The aim of us all is the provision of a range of shoes from which this customer can make his choice and be satisfied in style, quality, comfort and value. The shoe which you saw being fitted was made on a last of a particular size and fitting, for it is on and around a particular last that any pair of shoes is designed and made. Each last has a character of its own. The last model maker has to combine style with the good fitting properties traditional to our shoes. These two red models are made to fit the same foot, a size 8. Note how the heel to ball measurement and the joint girth are similar for both lasts. The style is obtained by making the toe longer, leaving the essential properties untouched. The designer now takes the last in order to start styling. He covers it with a special material so that he can sketch on the last itself and utilize its special features. When he has satisfied himself with the lines of the shoe he is styling, the paper is removed from the last and flattened to give the shape of the various sections of the shoe. This shape of the front of the shoe, or the vamp as we call it, is required for a style on this last. When cut from leather, it would fit the last and eventually the foot like this. Also, the various components must fit the last. The insole must follow the bottom shape and fit the waist curve. The shank, on which the rigidity of the shoe depends, must be an exact fit. Also, the stiffener which supports the back of the shoe. The heel must stand square and give the correct toe spring. All these are based on the last. To make a shoe attractive and durable, all design and components must be allied to the correct leather. Designer and leather buyer choose the best possible material for a sample shoe they have a wealth of modern leathers available. For production of shoes in bulk, stocks of leather are kept in the upper leather department to meet current requirements. The leather is examined and sorted by skilled personnel into suitable qualities and weights for each style of shoe. The leather is sorted out a day in advance of it being required for cutting up into shoe parts. We now go into the main factory area, into the clicking room, where the leather is cut out into the sections of the shoe upper. The patterns must be skillfully interlocked to save material, but also the correct quality and stretch in the leather must be used for each section. By the traditional method, a hand knife is run round a board pattern bound with brass.
Note the way the patterns are made larger for increase of shoe size. Today, press knives are mainly used in conjunction with a hydraulic press. Each section is cut out speedily and accurately. The knives are made in our own factory from Swedish steel. We now have the sections of the shoe cut out of leather. In the closing or stitching room, these are put together to make the shoe upper. Firstly, the linings are stamped so that the shoe number, size and last can be seen in the finished shoe. The sections are marked with white ink to show where the parts are put together or where decorative work has to be done. The edges of most sections must be skived off with a rotating sharp knife so that joins and edges can be made neatly. There are basically three main objects in closing. Edges are made to look attractive Fancy design treatments are carried out. The various outside sections and linings are joined together. The commonest edge treatment is to turn back the skived leather onto itself to form a folded edge. In mass production, a machine feeding in hot resin cement is used to fold the edge over. Edges on Oxford caps can be made to bend inwards by the action of a hot flame or burnishing. Another method is to stitch on a leather, plastic or fabric binding, which is turned over and cemented down by a special machine, as in folding. Punching out holes in the upper is done on a perforating machine, which does one punch at a time. Many different shapes and sizes of punch can be used. If the quantity is sufficient, this large machine does many operations at once. An expensive die will perforate, gimp the edge, stitch mark and punch out a centre design. Fancy stitching is done both on normal sewing machines and on special machines which do one kind of stitch only. This Adler machine, for instance, does a neat cross stitch. The normal sewing machine stitches anywhere the designer draws his lines sometimes in conjunction with punching or other decoration. Finally, the various sections of the upper are joined together. For instance, stitching on the toe cap.
joining backs to front of a derby shoe. joining backs of linings. Attaching backs to front of linings. Attaching the linings to the outsides and trimming away surplus lining material. joining backs to fronts of a brogue. Another final operation is eyeleting. Many styles of eyelet may be used. The shoes are laced with string so that a set opening is maintained across the instep when the shoes are lasted. The uppers are then examined in detail. Whilst the uppers were being stitched together, the soles and insoles were being cut and prepared in another department. Leather varies greatly in quality and in thickness, so each bend of leather must be sorted before being cut up into outsoles, midsoles, heel top pieces, etc. The older type of mechanical press is used for this. Heels are run in with the soles so as not to waste the expensive leather. The more loosely fibred bellies of leather are used for inner soles and are again cut on the mechanical press. Rubber soles for cemented shoes are being cut on a modern hydraulic press accurately and a pair at a time. Insoles for enduric molded shoes are being cut six at a time with specially made forged knives. These man-made materials are uniform. All leather components are put through a machine which evens the substance and stamps on a figure showing thickness. After the leather soles and insoles have been cut, they are sorted by skilled craftsmen into grades suitable for different purposes. The specification for each shoe states what material quality, thickness of sole and so on are required. And day by day, as the various shoes are planned into the factory, the requirements for that day are fitted up from the cut stock and go up to the lasting room. Eventually, stiffeners, heels, welts, 
insoles, and soles are assembled together with the closed uppers and the required lasts, and all is ready for the shoes to be made. At North Park, we make three types of men's shoes. Cemented, light fashion shoes where the sole is stuck to the upper by means of strong cements. Welted, which is the traditional method of stitching and sewing the sole to the upper by means of a welt. And finally, molded or vulcanized, where raw rubber is cured or vulcanized straight to the bottom of the shoe under high pressure and temperature. First of all, we shall follow through the making of a cemented shoe. And in order to see what is meant by this, here is a shoe cut away across the front. And here is the same view as a diagram. Imagine that you are looking at a shoe with a last in it cut through the middle. An insole is tacked to the bottom of the last. The upper is pulled over this last and stuck to the insole. A filling is put in the bottom, and the outer surface of the upper leather is cemented. Finally, the sole is stuck to the upper. This is a direct form of attachment. The sole is stuck directly to the upper, which in turn has been stuck to the insole. This is the department where cemented shoes are made on a conveyor. The first operation is to mould the insole to the shape of the last. The insole is tacked to the bottom of the last very accurately. A stiffener is inserted between the lining and the outside of the back of the shoe. And a back forming machine moulds the back to the shape of the last and clears wrinkles out of the linings. A toe puff is softened by putting it through a conditioning machine and stuck to the upper where it will set hard in the finished shoe. The toe of the upper is coated with a special cement. This same cement is applied to the insole. The upper is tacked to the back of the last and is then ready to be pulled over the last and cemented to the insole in one operation. A complicated machine stretches the leather down over the last and the edge of the upper is wiped under the last by a heated plate which causes the cement on the upper and the insole to bond strongly together. The sides of the shoe are pulled over the last and stuck to the insole by this fast machine which applies a hot resin cement between the upper and the insole. The seats are lasted in a single action by a multi-tack machine and are pounded to make them flat. The toes are scoured. We now have a completely lasted shoe and at this point it is thoroughly examined so that any faults can be put right before the sole is stuck on. The surface of the leather facing the sole has to be roughed up before a high quality synthetic cement is applied.
a strong steel shank is inserted to ensure that the shoe is rigid in the waist. Meanwhile, the soles have been prepared in another department, ready to be attached to the lasted uppers. After cutting, the rubber soles are trimmed to give a neat edge. They are then sprayed on the sole edge, 12 pairs at a time. This process is called pre-finishing. Nothing more has to be done to the edge once the sole is on the shoe. After pre-trimming, the upper surface is roughed up to make sure that the cement will strike home. This is done on both rubber and leather soles. The soles are cemented and allowed to dry thoroughly. Back on the production line, the cement on the sole is reactivated by heat and then pressed to the shoe bottom under high pressure. The last having been slipped from the shoe, a high heel can be attached by nailing it from inside the shoe. The roughly built heel is trimmed to the shape of the top piece. It is fine scoured to produce a smooth surface ready for the application of a heel dye and colour. The heel is then burnished on a wheel with wax to give a high waterproof gloss. A welted shoe is more complicated. Look again at a cross section of this type of shoe, imagining a shoe cut through the middle. In this case, the insole has a rib attached to it before it is tacked on the last. The upper is pulled over the last and temporarily stapled to this rib. A prepared strip of leather called a welt is sewn to this rib, catching in the upper as shown below. The space between the rib is filled with a flexible cork compound. The sole is stitched to the welt. This is an indirect attachment the sole is stitched to the welt and the welt to the upper. There is no direct attachment of the sole to the upper. This makes it easy to repair. Our welted shoes are made on a conveyorized system called Formulast. The shoes are made quickly and are set to the shape of the last by heat. Firstly, though, the insoles must be prepared. The surface of the leather insole is lightly scoured. In this case, the leather insole is cut to a standard shape and has to be rounded down to the correct shape. Every half-size last is a different shape, so we use a hard wood block against which a knife runs and cuts the insole to the required shape. The insoles are cemented. A strong, specially constructed rib is stuck to this cemented insole and the accuracy of its positioning is vital for the appearance and strength of the shoe. This insole is tacked to the bottom of the last in readiness for the upper to be pulled over and fixed to it. After the stiffeners are inserted, the uppers are loaded into a tunnel where a fine spray of warm water makes them soft, supple and ready for lasting. The lasts are loaded onto the conveyor track at the same time.
At the other end of the tunnel, the uppers are taken out and tacked to the back of the last. The shoes are given their initial pull over the last on this machine, which tacks the uppers temporarily to the insole. The sides of the upper are stapled to the rib. After being replaced on the track, the shoes go through a steamer which softens the toe before they are lasted in on a new automatic machine which uses a nylon thread. The seats of the shoes are conditioned and then lasted by nails as on the cemented shoe. The shoes are examined for any faults of lasting. The track then takes them through the heat setter, which dries out most of the moisture which has been put into the upper and sets it to shape. As they come out, the shape retention is equivalent to four days on the last, in 15 minutes. Any surplus upper material is trimmed off. The welts are sewn in. You can see the welt in the machine ready for sewing. After the welts are sewn, the surplus material of the rib is trimmed away and the welts are beaten out flat. A flexible cork compound is pressed into the cavity between the rib. The bottoms of the shoes are solutioned, ready for the soles to be temporarily laid. Note the wood shanks in the waist of the shoe and the seat piece which has been riveted on. When the shoes were welt sewn, the soles were loaded into a muller for conditioning. You can see them going in dry and coming out with the surface wet. The soles are pressed onto the bottom of the shoe. They are then rough rounded to give the shape of the finished shoe. This shoe has also had a groove put in the sole to take the stitching. Some shoes have their soles stitched in a channel so that the stitches are hidden. Here you see such a shoe being rounded and the sole slotted at the same time. The channels, as we call them, are opened, ready to take the stitching. The main attachment of the sole in a welted shoe is by stitching. Note that the seats have first been nailed to make them solid. This shows stitching in a channel.
After the leather lip of the channel has been cemented, it is beaten down over the stitches. Where the sole has been grooved, the stitches lie in the groove. The bottoms of the shoes are levelled by a roller under great pressure. It follows the contours of the waist. The heels are attached from the outside while the shoe is still on the last. Nails are driven into the seat of the shoe and then the complete heel is driven onto these nails. An important operation on all welted shoes is edge trimming, which not only gives a neat appearance, but gives character to the edge of the shoe. It is done by very high speed cutters. The edges are colored and waxed. They are then set with a hot iron automatically. This gives a polish to the edge and helps it to be waterproof. The bottom of leather soles must be carefully scoured to give a fine surface for the bottom finish. After this, various kinds of bottom finishes can be applied. A common one is shown here being sprayed on. The bottom is then polished up with wax. The heels and edges are brushed up to remove any dust. Other kinds of bottom finishes which we commonly do are a two color finish with burnishing on the sole, an attractive dark brown finish, a shadow sprayed sole. After these shoes are finished, the lasts are slipped out. The soles are stamped either by embossing with heat or with a gold foil. A modern track is used for these finishing operations. The shoes are ready for final cleaning but first we will see how moulded shoes are made. Here is a cutaway section of a moulded shoe and this is the same section shown on the diagram. Note how the upper is lasted over the insole as in a cemented shoe and then the rubber sole is moulded straight on to this. Our moulded shoes are pulled over as in other constructions. The sides are lasted flat to the insole, in this case with tacks, instead of cements. The toes are also lasted by tacks. After the shoe is lasted, it is carefully roughed to a straight line. The bottom of the shoe is cemented, brushed right in, and then cemented again. The shoes have a wood seat filler attached 
and are then put on a steel foot and lowered under high pressure into a mould which has been made to fit the shoe bottom exactly. A blank of raw uncured rubber is first placed in the mould. This rubber, which is then subjected to a temperature of 150 degrees centigrade for nine minutes, flows to fill the mould under pressure and is vulcanised directly onto the shoe, giving a long-wearing, completely waterproof construction. When the shoe comes out of the mould hot, it is virtually finished. Any rubber spew is removed and the fine rubber flash is trimmed. All shoes of any construction have now to be cleaned, ready for boxing. We call this the shoe room. First of all, the heel sock is inserted into the shoe. This sock has previously been stamped with silver or gold to show the brand. The back parts of the shoe are clipped in on this reforming machine. The shoes are cleaned and dressed. They are given a sprayed-on finish, either dull or shiny, according to requirements. Different shoes require different treatment. Here is one being shadow sprayed. All brogue shoes also have to be spray antiqued to give them their characteristic look. The shoes are brushed up and are then carefully examined. laces are put in. They are then put into the shoe boxes which have been previously labelled. All shoes for our own shops are loaded into special railway containers and then are sent on their way to the warehouse and to the shops. Export shoes are separately packed in another department. And so we leave the North Park factory where Timpson fine shoes are made.